Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Virtua Furugi. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, then welcome back. This week I'll be taking a look at another sneaker for you guys. And this week is gonna be a shoe that may have fallen off trend a little bit, but is still very popular to this day. And that is the New Balance 550 in the white and green colorway. All right, so New Balance. Of course, I don't need to explain to you that New Balance has had a resurgence in the past few years and have maintained a level of relevance next to Nike and Adidas to suit their own sort of subculture. Uh, and in fact, actually, Nike and Adidas are playing catch up with what New Balance has sort of captured in terms of the sneaker market, which is pretty interesting. Referring to the 550 specifically, uh, it was a retro basketball sneaker that was released originally in the 1980s and was revived when Amy Leon Dore collaborated with New Balance on this model and sort of brought it back into the limelight. The 550 itself became really popular because it came out right along the same time as the Nike Dunk Renaissance that occurred. And this was just another retro 80s basketball sneaker that a lot of people could flock to, especially being positioned as the Dunk alternative where a lot of people didn't necessarily want to go with the Nike Dunk because it was the most popular option. So they sort of pivoted to the New Balance 550 and that really increased the popularity a lot for people who wanted that same aesthetic but didn't want to follow the same trends as everybody else. And that itself is actually a little funny because it became oversaturated in of itself similar to what happened with the Nike Dunk. There were just so many colorways and everything for this specific shoe that the popularity waned and nowadays you can actually find the New Balance 550 sitting at a lot of retail locations, which is good. But does it mean that you should still be interested in buying one? Well, obviously if you like the look of the shoe, but let's take a little bit of a closer look at it specifically. So looking at the shoe itself, uh, the design is relatively basic. Uh, there's nothing too crazy. Um, but I will say that in comparison to something like the Nike Dunk, right, I am going to compare it to the Dunk a lot because it, this is basically like the adjacent Dunk, essentially. Um, it is a little bit busier, I would say. There definitely is a lot more going on here. Of course, you have New Balance written on the midsole. You have a lot more panels. Um, you have a lot, a lot more texture going on here. Um, there's this plastic like tab that sort of like goes on the uh, heel of the shoe. Um, you have a puff print like logo, which is pretty cool. A lot of different materials going on, which is pretty typical of what New Balance does. They do a lot of interesting types of designs here, especially with this suede uh, toe cap. That's definitely one of the most striking parts of the shoe and probably one of my favorite parts of it, if we're being quite honest. So looking at the materials of the shoe, of course, you're going to have leather. Uh, now the leather here is pretty standard, so the price point of this is $110. So you're gonna be getting similar stuff to like a Nike Dunk or like the Air Force One or whatever. If you've seen that Rose Anvil video, it does show that this has some of the worst leather on uh, a sneaker, especially in that price point, which is a little unfortunate. For this general release colorway, it's pretty average. I mean, as I said, it's very comparable to a Nike Dunk. But if you were to get those Amy Leon Door collabs, apparently they have better leather. I can't say for sure, but what's here is fine. I mean, it's exactly what you would expect. I would say if you've seen a Nike Dunk, it's pretty much the same. Um, it's actually a little less stiff than something like the Panda Dunk. The Panda Dunks got really stiff, especially with the restocks. Those things are basically being like churned out like crazy. So I can absolutely say that those probably have worse leather. This not nearly as bad, but it's fine. It's serviceable, right? It's gonna crease, it's, it's pretty standard leather across the board. As for other materials, of course, the tongue is gonna be made out of nylon and you get this pretty cool looking uh, basketball graphic for New Balance, uh, as well as you have mesh and the suede toe cap, which I already mentioned. And then of course you have the rubber midsole and outsole. And these are fine. There's some branding, right? You have the New Balance, uh, logo as well as New Balance written out. So this shoe is pretty heavily branded. So if you're not really a big fan of like super busy designs and graphics going on, you might not like this one as much. Other than that though, the shoe itself is actually pretty heavy, at least in comparison to other sneakers. This is probably heavier than like Jordan 1s, at least for me, right? I'm not, I didn't actually weigh these, just kind of like picking them up and feeling them. It's a lot heavier and it's kind of weird. 
This shoe also needs a little bit of time to break in. When I first got them, they're pretty stiff, which can be a testament to some cheap quality, but also it can mean that they're built pretty sturdy. I would probably go with the former on that one. As for the sizing of this shoe, I went true to size. Uh, I'm a true size 11, went size 11 in here and they fit totally fine. Also the comfort on this was actually a little bit surprising because uh, typically with these like basketball sneakers, you don't really expect much, but the uh, insole that comes with this is an ortholite insole and it's actually pretty cushiony and pretty comfortable overall. Usually I like to put my own insoles in these uh, like retro style shoes but I don't think I'm gonna need to with this one, which is pretty nice. As for the colorway, I went with white and green, and I would say this looks very good. I mean, I've been on the green kick lately, you know, because I had the Air Jordan 1 Lucky Green review out last week. This is a much more toned down green. This is a much darker green, like a forest green. It's very nice. Honestly, this is, this is a really beautiful looking shoe. I think a lot of people would call this too busy. Uh, but I like this a lot better, a lot better than something like the Nike Dunk. Uh, maybe similar to what the Adidas Forum is. That one's kind of busy too, but I like the New Balance a lot better just because typically I kind of gravitate towards New Balance lately. And also I just kind of like the design. The design's pretty striking for me. All right, and as always, I'll be taking a look at some outfits that I threw together with the New Balance 550s. So this first one is definitely some very relaxed vibes. So for the pants, I have Dickies 874s in black. And then of course I have that denim jacket, the same one I was wearing last week. It's a vintage one from Tommy Hilfiger. And then the t-shirt I have under it is a Sunrise t-shirt I got in Japan. And then the hat is going to be an ALD New York Yankees hat. It's also green to match the green for the New Balance sneakers. Pretty basic outfit and I really like this one. Here's another chill vibe outfit. Uh, so for this one, I wanted to remind you that I do still have hair and I don't just wear hats constantly. So for the pants, I have some Made in USA Levi's. I believe those are Orange Tab 606, that's the model. Uh, so a little bit of a skinnier fit on those. And then for the sweater, of course, that is a Supreme sweater. Uh, with a polo under it just to kind of show that you know, I'm dressing it up a little bit It's a little bit more preppy right a little bit more preppy But still showing that that I'm cool enough to wear supreme that I'm that I'm just I'm the it guy You know what I mean? So yeah, another pretty basic outfit nothing much going on here But hey, you know what? I'm kind of letting the shoes and the sweater speak for themselves and for this last outfit It's going to be a little bit more baggy, but still has a green vibe going on so I have my green uh, cargo pants that those are from a uh, needles my favorite brand of course then the t-shirt is going to be the same one It's uh, the sunrise shirt and then that uh, Button-up shirt I have over it is going to be some vintage uh, thrifted uh, Shirt from Jeffrey Bean. I believe was the brand it looks really nice and I like the stripe on it and it's green to match the green vibes of course and then the beanie I have on is a white beanie from Supreme. Yeah, I'm wearing Supreme today. Look at me. I'm so cool, man. Uh, really like the proportions on here. Very relaxed, very casual, and it looks cool to me. So I hope you think the same. So yeah, those are pretty much my thoughts on the New Balance 550. It is a very good sneaker and I really like it, but I will address this, you know, right? Like for some people who were interested in this shoe might not be interested in it anymore because it's not trending, right? It was trending for a little bit along with the Nike Dunk, but at this point, a lot of people are moving on to stuff like Solomon's or whatever and other New Balance silhouettes. The 550 has sort of been left behind. Now, ALD is coming out with another collaboration for it, but at this point, you'll see a lot of 550s sitting. And I think that kind of puts people off a bit because they kind of like the exclusivity. They like it being a hyped product. They kind of like all that, that, that uh, element to it. But for me, right, like, I just like the look of it. Like, I, I just really like the, the aesthetic, the, the retro aesthetic. I think that's really nice for me. And I don't really care much about the fact that it, it's not trending anymore. And it's dead or whatever you want to call it. And I'll say that the shoe itself... I was interested in it because it was trending and became popular. It made me aware of what it was, so I became interested in it from that. But it, it sort of has surpassed it. You know, I know my style, right? I like vintage stuff. I like stuff that looks like this. I really like movies from that era. I kind of look at like fashion from that era as well. So something like this kind of fits with me very well. 
So if you were somebody who was wearing it purely for a trend and is kind of off it now just because it's not the hype thing anymore, then, you know, that's that's fine. You know, do your own thing. But I'm going to do my thing. I like this shoe. I'm still going to wear it, you know, for the foreseeable future. So that that's just how I feel, right? And I hope that if you are interested in this shoe, don't let th that aspect really influence your decision. Just be like, do I like this? Do I like this design? And for me, I like it and I would recommend it. So yeah all right and with all of that being said i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it informative do you like the new balance 550 do you own a pair do you want a pair or do you not like it at all if you like this video please leave a thumbs up and if you did not like it of course you can also dislike it if you like my content of course subscribe and i will see you guys next week for another video review so i hope you had a good one and i'll see you guys next time virtue of Fudugi signing off all right, and with all of that being said, that pretty much wraps up the video. I don't have too much else to say about the Adidas 550. Adidas 550, holy shit, man.